is probably the most serious video I'm ever going to make in my entire life. Uh, I've been cultivating a source inside of these sheriffs, and I'm not going to get into uh, any specifics about that. But what I'm going to say is that uh, I need the crowd's help now to verify information that I received from inside the sheriffs. And this is information directly concerning Russell Poole. And um, I'm going to go through what I've been told, but I'm also going to go through kind of what happened and how this worked. I confronted Jim McDonald at a Leadership LA function. It was an alumni only function. Jim McDonald was the keynote speaker. I cornered him and I told him that we had interest from the DA's office in solving the Tupac and Biggie murder cases, but we needed a homicide investigator. And the homicide investigator, uh, we wanted to come from inside the sheriffs because we had struck out with LAPD. He reluctantly agreed to set up a meeting for both Russell and I to attend and to present uh, the investigation. And Russell had a whole game plan about he, how he wanted to uh, investigate these two murders and who he wanted to bring in for questioning. And he said, you know, obviously, wh whoever we bring in and we get to flip first is going to turn and we're going to, you know, be able to get their witness testimony that's going to implicate other people. And so he had this whole plan about how to proceed. And we had an assistant district attorney who was on board to investigate these murders. And the meeting was set up through Kerry Carter, there's email trails on all of this stuff too. And originally I was supposed to go to the meeting. So a few days before that meeting happened, and by the way, Greg Kading has come out since and said that he knew for three weeks that the meeting had been set up, and he was right. Because we set up that meeting and it took three weeks to actually get a date for a homicide investigator to meet with Russell. Okay? And anyway, the information that I received, oh, and, and let's, I guess let's dig into the, the actual meeting and what happened. So three weeks ahead of time, we knew that there was going to be a meeting uh, about the murders of Tupac and Biggie. And that was, that was what was going to be discussed at this meeting. Uh, and originally I was supposed to be there. And Russell um, and I, you know, we, we cultivated a source which in this case was Thaddeus Culpepper, who was Suge's attorney. And it was information that I had sent to Thomas Mesro. They read it to Suge. We verified that uh, the information that we sent over was true. Thaddeus uh, had that conversation with me, and then he had that conversation with Russell. And that was actually before we uh, had scheduled a meeting. And so we, had, we were armed with that information with the DA's office. The last meeting that we had with uh, the assistant district attorney, we told them that Suge Knight had verified this. And then a few days before we were supposed to have the meeting, and uh, we we've get an additional um, piece of information about a sheriff that had let the shooters into the club and dropped the shooters off at the airport. And we also had cultivate one, uh, cultivated one additional uh, piece of information, and that was Reggie Wright Sr. being in the MGM video. And we had verified that with Russell had sent it out to his law enforcement people. But Russell also had said, hey, I knew Sr. at the time, and that's him. And he sent it out to three or four of his law enforcement buddies who'd worked with Sr., and they had verified that that they didn't believe did in fact believe that that was Reggie Wright Sr. on the MGM video. So Russell was going in armed with the uh, beginning pages of Chaos Merchants, which you can see it's all footnoted. So every piece of information that we had about eyewitness statements and what have you had lined up with the confession letter. And so Russell was going in armed with that, the 45 Tupac murder facts, the, uh, you know, and all of the footnotes that showed where this information had come from. Now, none of that changed in Chaos Merchants. That has always remained the same. And those are, those are unchanged. If you want to see that, it's on the crowdsourcethenews.com website. 
So, you know, Russell goes into that meeting. Obviously, we know he died in that meeting. Uh, you know, I find out about it actually through uh, Alex. Some of you may know him. He's the one that actually let me know that Russell had in fact died. And that put me into a frenzy. And I called and I spoke with Sergio Robledo. And I said, Sergio, what do I do? He said, get all of your information together as quickly as you can and as thorough as you can and release it publicly. He said, that's the safest thing you can do. And that's why Chaos Merchants got released in its raw form the very next day. So less than 24 hours later, Chaos Merchants had been released. And there was a press release that uh, Russell had released Chaos Merchants posthumously with me. And anyway, that, that got out. Um, and so one of my friends who had introduced me to Jim McDonald, so where I had met him originally, called up Jim McDonald and said, hey, Jim, you know, it's really bad that Mike's friend passes away in a meeting and you don't even call him to offer your condolences. So he kind of shamed him into calling me. And I had an hour long conversation with Jim McDonald and with Rod Cush, who was on the phone, too. And one of the questions that I asked them when I was on the phone, and they, they kind of walked me through, uh, you know, whatever their story was. It, it may not have been an hour. It may have been 45 minutes, but it was substantial. I was, I was, I remember I was outside pacing because I had people waiting for me to go eat. And, uh, and they waited inside very upset that I was out on the phone. But, I mean, what do you do? You're, you're on a phone. You're trying to find out information. One of the questions that I asked to Jim McDonald and Rod Cush is I said, I would like to know who was in the meeting. And they stonewalled me. They would not tell me who was inside the meeting with Russell. Well, this source that I've been cultivating inside the sheriffs, and this is a somebody who would know high enough up and doesn't want to be mentioned because it's very sensitive information. I need the crowd now to verify this. I need the crowd to reach out and I need the crowd to do FOIAs on Russell Poole's death with the sheriffs, with the coroners. We need to FOIA this. I need somebody to help out with that. Uh, I don't know how to do FOIAs. You guys probably do. Somebody knows how to do FOIAs. So let's FOIA the information. I need autopsy, I need death certificate, and I need the report. There was a report that was written inside the sheriffs. I need all of that information. We need it to continue our investigation. And now there's a story that I was told about how Russell died. I was told that Reggie Wright Jr. was in that meeting with the sheriffs. Now the lead suspect in both the Tupac and the Biggie murders that was involved in the conspiracy, according to the information we've compiled, is in the meeting. That alone is enough to cause uh, Russell Poole to have a heart attack showing up in that meeting. But that's not what I was told about how it happened. Evidently, right outside of where Russell was meeting is a defibrillator. Now, I need somebody to verify that, too. And I was told that Russell was choked out in that meeting and when he was choked out, they brought the defibrillator in, and instead of saving him from having a heart attack, they used the defibrillator, and supposedly there were burn marks on the body. Now, the autopsy report will show that. And I don't have a copy of the autopsy, but I, I, we need to verify this. We need to verify that this is true. This is a source in, inside of the sheriffs that has come out and said this. We need to verify it. I need the crowd. I need p other people that are within the sheriffs. They It had to create a huge spectacle with Russell when they were all of a sudden, you know, uh, they're giving him uh, whatever mouth-to-mouth -mouth, uh, CPR and they're using the defibrillator on him to actually give him the heart attack that he died from as opposed to trying to save him from a heart attack. And that would... They're, they've then got a reason to explain why there's burn marks on the body. And it's time that, uh, that we try and verify all of this. I've been working hard to cultivate these, uh, these leads, and now it's time to figure out whether or not they're credible and whether or not we can corroborate them. And I need the crowd to do this. It's in your hands. Let's get FOIA requests and let's verify if this information is true and correct. 
and let's continue this investigation. Uh, Reggie Wright Jr. and Sr. are both in in jail at this time. They are they have charges against them. There's quite a few counts, and they're specifically listed on the Justice Department website. So we have a real shot at getting to the bottom of what happened.